What's going on YouTube? Is Mr. Ferguson here once again? Thank you guys for coming back for another video here in Central North Carolina. Uh, still don't have the facial hair; it's slowly coming back. Uh, the kids got weirded out. Not dad, not having any more facial hair. But uh, thank you for tuning in today. I uh, got the triple threat hat on today because we're going to be out here in the front lawn today. I want to do the final verdict on the Poa Constrictor. I was just. It's, it's funny how the content just kind of comes to me. Um, last night, me and my wife went on a walk uh, right before dark and we was looking in the front yard. I was like, huh, I was looking at um, things in the lawn and talking to her basically about Poa Annua. Then I had a comment, I believe from David on the channel and he was like, Mr. Ferguson, can we get an update on the ethofumisate? And I was like, I was just thinking that. And then Mr. Kevin sends me an email talking about Poa in his backyard and asking a couple questions. So it's like, okay, Lord, I take that as a sign. We need to deal with this topic today. So we're going to go in the front yard. And what I want to talk about is maybe some of you up north, maybe some of you in North Carolina around where I'm at, um, you're dealing with Poa Annua. We have dealt with uh, last spring and this past fall trying to figure out dealing with Poa Annua. You know, sometimes you have to overseed, like me, the past, the first three years of, of this lawn journey, guys, I've had to overseed. And when we're overseeding, pre-emergence not an option. And so even looking on Reddit and some of the forums where people are asking, how do I deal with this Poa Annua? People are still, they're like, you need to just use pre-emergent in the fall. Well, that's easy to say, but when you're needing to overseed because summer has killed off some of your good grass, and then you put down a pre-emergent, well now you've got gaps in your yard that's not gonna fill in because you didn't seed because you used pre-emergent to stop POA. So it's like, how can we deal with the POA, but yet also have a full, thick, lush lawn by adding seed in the fall as well. And the best things that I have found so far is this ethofumisate, but did it work? And that's kind of, we, we've kind of done updates on this and I'm gonna do my final verdict on it today and show you my front yard. And just for the new people that are tuning into my channel, I'm not a professional guy. I'm just an average North Carolina resident that wants to have a nice yard, that gets advice from professionals like Pete Denny and Alan Hain on YouTube. And uh, Pete is obviously in North Carolina. So I listen to a lot of his content, a lot of his advice I take I heed because he's in North Carolina like me and uh, my backyard um, we did not oversee my backyard in fall I put down for the first time because my whole entire side yard and backyard made it through the summer we put down what's called dithiapir which is another pre-emergent and pretty much I've not seen hardly any poa annua at all in my backyard it has done wonders so it it does what it's supposed to do so we're not going to deal with the backyard i got the triple threat hat on because we planted in the fall because we did lose some of our front yard we could have probably done pre-emergent the front yard but we lost a little bit so we overseeded triple threat in the front yard this is mostly uh, on the bank we've got a jonathan green solar green then we mixed in some a little bit of solar green with triple threat and overseed and some of this is gci turf type tall fescue so you got to blend this front yard has never been fully killed off we've just been overseeding with turf type tall fescue over the past three or four years but we didn't apply any pre-emergent what we did was i bought a product called poa constrictor and i saw online and was listening to uh paul's prime cuts who is down in raleigh north carolina and uh, uh mr kevin and i tested etho for sc in his yard and i said well i want to try it in my front yard because i'm not able to do pre-emergent um this ethofumisate may be able to be applied and save me from a lot of poa so did that work we applied one application according to what the rates were in the front yard and i want to show you the final verdicts that we're now in march um, it's only going to be getting warmer and as it gets warmer the poa is going to die off and it's not going to be you know it's not going to come up any more than it is right now right now it is prime poa and we got the seed heads popping up and we've I've been showing you on the channel so I'm gonna turn our camera around we're gonna walk in the front yard and I want to give you my final verdict of POA constrictor did it make a difference at all is it worth buying is it worth using let's turn the camera around let me give you my final update of ethofumisate slash POA constrictor I was able to oversee this yard then we put down ethofumisate did it make any difference in POA annua in my front yard so the final assessment for ethofumisate, I'm going to try to keep my back to the sun so the camera don't get that little uh, sun rays on it. But number one, man, the grass is growing. The ammonium sulfate is the type of fur you're looking on my lawn right now. The greenness, it's from ammonium sulfate from Lawn Supply Company. Done a couple videos on that. Check it out in the channel history. Um, it is looking some type of beautifully green color. Um, it just looks awesome. It also has a side benefit 
of being able to low, lower pH levels, which I am in need of as well. So I just want to mention that as well. So for those that may be just tuning in, the, the fertilizer I've so far used, I've done about 0.75 pounds of ammonium sulfate. It's a water soluble liquid, sprayed it down all over the lawn and man, it has just looked phenomenal. And I'm just kind of going to spoon feed that. But let's get back to ethofumisate. Did it work? Is it worth it? 100% yes. Am I 100% POA free? No, I'm not. What I've noticed and what I was exactly, exactly what I was telling my wife is like right here on the edge, you got a little bit of POA right here. Um, and then like over here, you got one that's like right here. And then you come and you got some right here. And now this, now for the new people, sorry, old people, I got to say it, all these little gaps, you're like, what the crap is that? This guy's got holes in his yard. We had Poa Triv. We dug it up um, late in January, December, threw some seed down. That's what these little gaps are. We're trying to cut out Poa Triv and we've got Poa Triv coming up everywhere. It's just, it's a tough battle. But as far as the Poa Annua, you see the little seed heads here um, on the edges. That's exactly where I'm seeing it. So exactly what I was telling my wife last night before I even knew this is the video is gonna made you can see along my edges as I slowly walk you'll see a little bit of those seed heads if you're wondering well what's the difference in that in Poa Triv well you can see the lime green right here see that lime green right there technically I should be cutting that out I'm not I'm not dealing with it I'm just kind of tired of dealing with it I get out here and I go and I start cutting 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 all over and all of a sudden it's like two more spots pop up it is it is so frustrating but right along the edges right here you see some Poa annua on the edges is where I'm seeing it. So what that tells me is I did a poor job with my trim pass whenever I laid this down. I think I did a poor job on the trim pass. Now, over here by the road, my shadow hopefully won't get in the way. You can see it's really bad along the road. As I walk, this is there's a lot right here. Now, right here, as I mentioned in that last video, we dug all this out, planted fresh uh, triple threat, and it is it's looking great right here. But then it continues, POA. Everywhere where I didn't dig out, I've got POA along the side of the road and POA over here. Not as concerned about this, and I believe I took my speed zone down here. Maybe I missed this. But as far as walking out in the grass, if I was to go you know, out here in the middle, it's, it's just straight up fescue, Jonathan Green slash triple threat slash GCI turf. It is not in the middle, which tells me, as I was just saying, I think I messed up and I didn't do a well enough uh, trim pass spraying the edges. You know, you don't want to waste your product, right? So when I would come through, I like to do my sprays this long ways. I would come and I'd spray and start right here, but I would miss this gap probably like a foot wide. And so I'm thinking that's why I didn't, I need to hit the concrete and go forward, hit all of the grass. And so I think it was user error on my mistake, because, uh, user error uh, on me, because everywhere else as I walk through the lawn, and hopefully today I'm gonna get to cut this bad boy, um, I am not seeing any POA annua whatsoever. So the bulk majority of my front yard that did not get any pre-emergent, mind you, you know, Dithiapir on the sides in the backyard doing great. But over here um, around this area, um, I didn't. Now here's a little bit. And again, these are areas where I've been pulling out Poa Triv. So is that maybe the reason? There's a little bit right here, a little bit over here. So there is a little bit over here. So let me back that statement up a little bit because I know that I sprayed all of this well, but I was digging and pulling up Poa Triv over here. So how much did that affect it? I don't know, stirring up the dirt, you're putting those weed seeds on top and there is some more over here than there is anywhere else. There's a little bit right here as well. Now I know that I sprayed all this pretty well. So the majority of it, yes. I'm seeing some right here as well. Let's look over here um, as I walk. Yep, there's a little bit right here, little bit right here. So this left side has been very weird this year. I don't know why it's different when I overseeded, but like this section seems to be a little more Poa annua here in this section. I don't know why. Maybe it's because the grass wasn't as tall, the sunlight hit it. With more. I don't. I'm not sure. But the majority of the lawn. Um, over here, I'm not seeing any. I'm seeing all just straight up fescue grass, as I was mentioning before. So wrapping this thing up with the conclusion, my final verdict is, yes, we have a little bit of POA over here, and on the right side of the lawn, 
almost none in the left middle side of the lawn, but we do have it on the edges. Now, the edges could be user error from myself, not hitting the edges properly with the liquid, totally possible, or I could have hit it all perfectly fine and it just decided to penetrate there uh, because of sunlight. Now, remember, a thick lawn is the best deterrent for Poa annua. A thick lawn is the best deterrent. You're not giving it room to pop up. I saw a huge reduction in Poa annua in my grass when I finally planted in fall, planted heavy, planted thick, and it gave less room for it. I still had POA pop up, but it was a almost a 70% reduction in how much I saw, but I've still got even like I showed you guys. Over here, it was very thin. Remember, in my lawn, as I showed you guys in the winter months, my lawn on this right side was real thin this past winter for whatever reason. When it's real thin in our lawn and the sun is able to penetrate the dirt, we've got POA seeds in our lawn. If you've d dealt with it once, you've got seeds in your lawn. And when the sun's able to penetrate our dirt, it will germinate that POA. So I believe that has something to do with it. So ultimately, my conclusion is I believe ethofumisate is worth your time, worth your effort. I believe doing two applications, not just one, but two. I should have done two, but now we know that two applications excuse me, two applications would possibly hold back almost all the POA. It is very possible. I don't know that for a fact, but I feel like two applications would have done much better. But the number one priority is to survive the summer with our grass and to go pre-emergent. If at all possible, we want to go pre-emergent. Ethofumisate is more, I have to overseed because this, the heat, the summer, it killed off some of my lawn, man. I got to re-overseed. Crap, I can't use pre-emergent. Well, the second best option I would say is is what we're talking about today, POA constrictor, Etho4SC. But I, I think I would give it as much application in the fall as you can to make sure it succeeds. Where one looks like it did pretty good, I believe two could, would be a lot better. So I hope that helps. Drop your questions below. David, I hope that helps answer your question. I do recommend it. I just think multiple apps now would be the best thing to do. And remember, keep your grass thick. When you're in the fall, you don't want to be mowing below three inches if possible because the sun, according to NC State, the sun can uh, penetrate the dirt underneath if we're cutting too low and it makes those weed seeds germinate. And yes, Poa Anu is one of those. So I hope that helps. I hope that gives you guys some, some answers and solutions. Again, pre-emergence our answer. And man, I'm so happy that I got Dithyp here out in the backyard because uh, uh, I don't see hardly any, any Poa Anu at all here besides in our mulch bed and maybe on the edges the same as my front yard but nothing nothing in the middle of the yard dithia here has done great to block the poa in my yard so thank you guys so much for tuning in i hope you have a fantastic wednesday uh give the video a like remember channel memberships remember super thanks all that good stuff thank you guys for support hope this is helpful to you and hope to see you out in the lawn come back for another video on friday god bless